Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Bonus Point Podcast. Once again, I'm your host, TJ Olson, and today's episode is all about Super Rugby. And we're super excited to have our next guest on the show today to talk all about it. Before we get started, I just want to thank our amazing sponsors. First off, Whalebird Kombucha. If you're looking for a great tasting beverage that is actually good for you, go try them out at your local Whole Foods, Air One, or other health food stores. Also, F45 Culver City. So F45 isn't just a gym, it's a real community and their team are all there to help you achieve your fitness goals with sessions in just 45 minutes. Check them out online as gyms will be opening back up in LA very soon. So as, all, as you all know, 2020 has been quite a terrible year. Aside from the tragedies the pandemic has brought on and the terrible situation still happening in America right now and possibly many other things, one of the other reasons 2020 sucked big time was for a lot of sports fans and due to the suspensions of a lot of the sports seasons. However, due to the great leadership by the Australian and New Zealand government, in my opinion, to reduce COVID-19 cases, many sports in both countries are now looking to return to playing sport. We just saw Rugby League return over the last couple of weeks, and I'm happy to say that Super Rugby is set to return this weekend. With that being said, I thought it would be a good idea to get someone on the show who will be playing in the Australian domestic version of the Super Rugby. I've been friends with our guest for over a decade and we went to school together, we played at the same rugby club and I've known him for a long time. He's someone I've been proud to see continuing to grow in the game of rugby and look forward to what the future holds for him. Please welcome current ACT Brumbies player and my guest at this time, Andrew Muirhead. What's up Andy, how you doing brother? Nah, real good mate, uh, thanks for having me. So I hear it's here. It's pretty cold in in Canberra town at the moment. It's it's chilly at the yeah, moment. Yeah, start of winter at the moment. It felt like we've been in winter for about two months, but it's, uh, this morning it's not too bad. It's about three degrees, but it's been in the negatives for most of the week. So pretty cold. <laughs> I would I would kill for some of that right now. Like I'm I'm loving the heat coming here in in California, but it's 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 killing me at the moment. It just comes and hits you in the face. But what's, yeah, what's the, the temperatures over there? Oh, it's coming to like 24, 25, but like the humidity is picking up. So it's, it's going to get yeah. to like 30s or something like that. So it'll be yeah. pretty, pretty tough. Not, not going to look forward to that at all. But um, <laughs> what's, what's the vibe been like down in Canberra now that the pandemic's kind of been calming down? Yeah, uh, obviously Canberra's been quite lucky, been quite isolated from the pandemic. We haven't, I think we've had one case in the last uh, month. So <laughs> um yeah, we've been quite lucky and our restrictions haven't been uh, probably as tight as the rest of Australia. We've been able to still um, somewhat work and uh, for us train. Um, so it's been quite nice. That's good. You guys might might have a leg up in this um, kind of domestic season coming up with the, the extra training. Yeah. So that'd be good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so so, so t- today I thought we'd just kind of talk about your career because obviously I know your career pretty well, but um, a lot of other people don't. And obviously we want to talk about the Super Rugby comp coming up for the domestic kind of Australian competition. How does that sound? Yeah, definitely. Keen to have a chat. Perfect. All right. Well, uh, first first time I met you and the first time I kind of saw your rugby career kind of start to flourish was at Brisbane State High, where we both went to school. What was kind of your rugby experience like at State High? Yeah, obviously uh, the great State High. Um, mm-hmm. It's full of a lot of, a lot of rugby talent. I, probably at that stage of my uh, rugby career, um, I probably wasn't the best rugby player. I had a little bit of talent, but I wasn't... Um, I wasn't the first pick in the team sort of thing. So um, we had some pretty good coaches there um, that uh, sort of developed and uh, got some extra skills while I was there for three years. And obviously, you know, we had a lot of good players around us that we could learn off, um, as you'd probably yeah. attest to. Who was, um, who was your coach for, was it still Gricey in 2010 for First 15? Or was yeah, it? So, yeah, so we had Gricey, Eggs and Noon. Noon is still... Okay, yes, yeah, so a bunch of bunch of guys that will be able to give you a bunch of different feedback and, and way to develop yeah. your game. But it kind of like the year prior, in the 2009 season, obviously the Brisbane State High had assembled kind of the greatest team in GPS history. Um, and there was kind of a, a lot of hype about State High the, the year kind of after that. So your your year, what was kind of the the pressure situation of the, from the coaches to back up that performance? Did you guys feel that or was it... Was it pretty much just new year, new team? Uh, yeah, look, we didn't, I don't think we felt too much pressure. To be honest, we knew that 2009 team was sort of a freak team and um, the amount of talent they had in it. Um, and I guess we had a couple of players that sort of stayed back and played in the 2010 season as well. Mm. Um, so we didn't really feel too much pressure. It was like everyone's just excited to put their hand up and try and play first. And 
put on a state high jersey, as you know, it's pretty exciting um, to represent the school. So uh, I don't think we really felt too much pressure. We, obviously, there was a bit of pressure with state high as a, as a team in general because they always were performing quite quite high that sort of time. So, yeah, it wasn't really too much pressure as a, in, in the team. Yeah. And another thing we have in common, we played for the same same club in Brisbane. So obviously, uh, South Rugby Club, not the not obviously the the most funded club or kind of the the first pick for a lot of for a lot of people to go play. But a lot of people kind of yeah. account it to uh, South culture. A lot of people will say that the culture of South is uncomparable to to pretty much a lot of clubs in Australia. What, why did you choose to go play for South? Yeah, um, I think. One of the main reasons, well, I'll probably have two reasons why I went there. It was a bit of an opportunity. Uh, I knew there was an opportunity for me to play uh, premier grade or first grade, as they call it in other places. Uh, earlier on, then it would be in another club. Um, and that was just from um, sitting down with coaches and going through a sort of a detailed plan of over my next two years out of school. And then also on the back of that, I had really good mates that all went to South as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's lucky, like you said, it's got an unreal culture there. So it was really easy to fit in. Didn't matter if you're 18 or 30 years old, everyone sort of got together and had a good time, which is probably one of the highlights of my rugby career in Brisbane, to be honest. Yeah. And you, you kind of had, you had a quick transition. So you came and played um, Colts, Colts with us, obviously under 21s for people that don't know what Colts are. And then kind of had a quick, quick skyrocket to, to premier grade and were able to kind of integrate yourself in that. But then you kind of moved in and the 2013 season, you were kind of described as one of the most elusive broken play players in the premier competition. So did you always kind of play with that elusive nature or was it something that you kind of learnt, or learnt over time or you got taught how to do? Um, I, don't know, I think it's just something you, you gain over experience of playing games. I, I played a lot of games as a junior through club teams, rep teams, and a lot of sevens as well. I think my sevens has probably helped me out just reading the game a little bit better. Um, but I, I think it's something that is, you can't really – you can train and train and train, but I think it's – if you, the more you play games, the, the better you can read a game and you read learn, situations. You learn by so, doing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you learn from experience. You have a tough loss, you sort of learn from that experience and sort of grow from that. So that's how I feel like you probably get better as a player. So you reckon you reckon it was kind of a balance between like 15s and sevens as well. So like you, because you played with Tribe and you played with a few other teams, that sevens kind of really yeah. helped with your 15s. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, in sevens, there's a lot of open space, broken play, and you can sort of read players' body language pretty pretty easily. So it makes I thought it made 15s a little bit easier coming back to play 15s because you're playing against probably guys that aren't as quick and not as fit. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you, if you, I, I remember the like playing fullback or wing. If you can catch a catch a prop or or a second row or something on on the back foot and then just kind of gas through it, it's it's probably one of the the better feelings as a fullback. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> but um, after after a couple of good seasons, you were also called up to train in the the Aussie under twenty squad. So for like two thousand and thirteen and two thousand fourteen, those were both years you were called up. What was that experience like to kind of get into that caliber of rugby? Yeah, it was good. It was good to sort of see where I was at uh, in terms of guys of my age uh, around Australia. Um, unfortunately, obviously, didn't get picked. wasn't in that sort of uh, that frame to get picked, but it was a good experience. Obviously, you get to meet a lot of uh, good connections and coaches and get some good coaching over those sort of camps you go into. So it was a good experience. And um, yeah, I guess I learned a fair bit out of that sort of thing, what a professional environment looks like. Yeah, I think, I think a lot of people credit that... Uh, the kind of the even if you don't get picked for something like that, they always credit the development or something like that is is kind of their yeah. their number one benefit of that kind of environment. I, like even when yeah. people who were younger when they were fifteen talk about playing for like the Reds Academy or something like there were obviously no real games involved with that, but being a part of that kind of professional or high performance environment is something that they kind of really credit to just learning and developing their game. So yeah, yeah. Definitely. So it must must have been a good experience. But, um, yeah, it was great. So obviously, after that, um, a few people have kind of been caught caught their eye about you. And then in the 2014 season, after that, you played a season with uh, Counties Monacau, and you got called up to go go kind of train with them over in New Zealand. How did that kind of opportunity come about? Yeah, uh, I guess I was um, I was quite impatient being in Brisbane. I, I thought I deserved to. <laughs> 
um, have higher honours. I was a bit arrogant in myself and confident in myself that I wasn't getting picked. Um, and I sort of, we had, uh, as you'd know, big Marfi Kefu from South. He, um, yeah, yeah. he, he played in Toulon with uh, a guy called Tano Manga and um, sort of had a conversation with him and asked what uh, his thoughts were in terms of my rugby. And then I was made a leap over to, to New Zealand, play a little bit of club footy over there in a great town of Waiku, it's called, uh, South yeah. of Auckland. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, Obviously, was training with the the county's Manukau ITM team back then, is what it was called, and um, eventually got a couple of games, I guess. So it was pretty pretty good. Pretty you good got you got three there. three caps, wasn't it? With um with that team, wasn't it? Yeah, so I, I played a couple of preseason games, defended the Ranfley Shield a couple of times, and then played yeah three uh, three caps in the ITM. Most people don't get to say they got to defend or play in a Ranfield Shield game, so that's that's something you definitely could yeah. chuck on chuck on the CV. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's one of my. Uh, we speak to our Kiwi counterparts over the ditch. That a lot of people don't really realise I've been over there. And once I mention I've defended the Shield, they get pretty stoked and want to have actually have a <laughs> chat. So. Yeah, a lot of a lot of people who aren't oh, from New Zealand or don't really know that kind of uh, provincial culture, they they just think it's just like another trophy. Like I I remember yeah. talking about it and then over here with someone, and then I was like, no, nah, it's like a it's a big deal. Like, and they sit there and they go, yeah. how big can it be? And I was like, you ask any Kiwi, they know what the Ranfilly Shield is. Like, even if they don't watch rugby, they know what it is. It's yeah, so it's, yeah. it's a it's a huge thing. The log wood, the log wood, what they call it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I remember when we had when we had a bit of a story when we used to have it as a team. Obviously, a small town of in South Auckland called Pukekoe used to go and take the shield into a bar, and the whole team would drink for free just because the shield was in there. So yeah, yeah. Sort of <laughs> fair, bit of, fair bit of weight to it. I, I think, especially in South Auckland, yeah, I think they'll they'll, they'll bound down to it anywhere it goes. Yeah, yeah but definitely. um, you, you you also got to play with guys like uh, Sunny Bill, Bundy Aki, Tim Nanai Williams. What was kind of the the transition like from playing club rugby in Australia to learning from people in the ITM Cup like that? In New Zealand, yeah, yeah, I was quite lucky, really. Um, I went to a team that was stacked with talent, um, and they're they such they were such nice and genuine people, um, and easy to learn from. And uh, it just it was nice to be in an environment where rugby was so important. And not saying that rugby is not important in club rugby in Australia, but when you go over there, it's it's what they live and breathe, and yeah. it's all they talk about. So it was nice just being around people that are also so passionate about rugby like myself and wanted to achieve something big. Mm. Yeah, no, that was, that was another thing that, um, that kind of, uh, a lot of, a lot of Americans over here, that was another thing I tried to explain to them. It was, it was like you go to New Zealand or you go to Australia. It's, it's like the passion is just through the roof. And they, and then I had a guy that went to, went to like a tour for New Zealand and he was just blown away and he wanted to bring that back to America. Like just be all yeah. about rugby and bring that culture. It's, yeah, if, it's. If, yeah. If, if America, uh, my opinion is if America could tap into 40% of that sort of passion towards rugby, it'd be a, a huge powerhouse. It'd be hard to stop. So. Oh yeah, mate. Why do you, why do you think I moved over here? It's like, you look at every yeah. other, every other sport they adapted in the Olympics and all this other stuff. And like, yeah, it's, it's pretty much they'll, if they can tap into it, just like you said, they'll they'll be a big powerhouse. Hopefully, we'll look we'll look into that further down the track. But yeah, yeah. definitely. Uh, and you mentioned um, Tana Umanga as your coach. Like, what was it like being coached by an All Blacks legend? Some someone that I I grew up watching, and a lot of other people did. What what was it like? Yeah, it was unreal. The, the big fella still got it. He used to chuck on the boots at training and still <laughs> tear shreds up hair shreds of these young guys that were coming up so it was quite impressive to watch to be honest but he, used to, he was such a cool head as a coach like um, not much really bothered him but if, if he if he needed to get a point across you'd definitely know about it and um, I don't know just be, I've, I've been quite lucky I've been around a fair few older heads and just the knowledge you can you can grasp of those sort of people um, about rugby and just just how to be as, as a person is so huge and he's such a such a good person to be around. I learned a lot of him. He's he's an unreal bloke. Mm. There's my um my uncle Sasha. He went to high school with him, and I haven't had the the pleasure to meet him yet. But I've had so many conversations with him just about like his kind of demeanor and and like just the way he is. And he can be such a like a soft spoken person, such a nice person. But when it comes to something that he wants to kind of put a point across, 
it's like the, all the stories I've heard, you'll, you'll bloody know it. <laughs> It'll be like a yeah. hit in the face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, if, it, if, if it'd come off a, a bat, like a loss that you, a team generally just played bad and you come in on a Monday, be like, oh, we're going to get it here for a couple of hours. But then <laughs> we'll see. It was also like one of the boys as well, but it's very easy to get along with. That'd be, yeah, I think that'd be a good, good kind of dynamic to have as a coach. Do, do you have kind of a favourite game or a memory from that season with Counties? Um, obviously, your first game for a team is always pretty special. Um, but I remember one of my memories I remember the most is when Sammy Bill come, first come across. So he was obviously, uh, I think he was playing league at the time. Mm. And he'd come across and it was his first game back in Union. Um, and it was a midweek uh, counties game. Um, and it was probably our biggest crowd of the year on a Wednesday. And it was pretty <laughs> unreal. And he come off, he was on the bench. He didn't even start, but that was a pretty good experience. He ended up uh, winning against, I think it was against Auckland, which there. Oh, yeah, that'd be a good win. As, yeah. Yeah, it's meant to be known as our big brothers and we're meant to be like the little brothers. So it was good to get a win over them. Yeah, I think when I was coaching for counties in 2016 for the, for the uh, B side, and then kind of any time I'd get to go to a, like be a trainer for one of the Mitre 10 Cup games and we'd, we'd play like Auckland or Waikato, any of those close games, the, the rivalry yeah. is just so big that you don't know until you go and experience it. And like, I think I went to an Auckland Counties game and oh man, it was in, in our home field. It was freaking crazy. It was just the, getting a win over Auckland. You're 100% right. It's, it's like we smashed our yeah. big brother. <laughs> And I had a, I was quite also quite lucky. I had a, um, I had a pretty good, pretty unreal experience, and probably the, my the third. It would have been three weeks before the season started, maybe. Um, the All Blacks were going into it. They're having a camp in Waikato for a, going up against England in their their Test series um, in New Zealand, and they needed a, a back line to run the England plays against. Oh. So uh, so I was lucky enough to have a, a day of training with them and. Um, we've got a couple of videos of me just run. I was, we were playing 15 on 15 and um, they were short and outside back. So I was the only sort of non-all black on the field playing this 15-15 training. It was pretty, <laughs> pretty unreal. Oh, Looking man, back on it, it was pretty cool. That's there. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. <laughs> oh, man. So after, after your season with Counties, you head back to Brisbane. You play another season with South. What was kind of the feeling heading into that kind of that infamous 2015 season? Yeah, I don't know. It wasn't really. Um, we obviously had a pretty good squad. We, were, we weren't full of superstars. Out. We just had a solid squad. Um, they were pretty tight knit. Um, and then I don't think, as I can remember, I don't think our start of the season was that great. I think we were winning, winning games, losing games. We weren't really putting on back to back performances. And then we just grew tired and tired as a group um, and enjoyed each other's company. and. Um, we just kept on winning games towards the end of the season and um, playing just good footy and um, obviously end up winning it in the end. So um, there wasn't really anything at the start of the season that I could pick out besides probably a culture thing, to be honest. Our culture was just just at a high level. And that in, in most teams, successful teams, that's, that's probably the difference in winning games, to be honest. Mm. Yeah, so that's, that's all I really remembered from like kind of 2000 and... I think 12 to 15, 16, it was, it was definitely, you could, you could see that everybody was playing for each other. It wasn't necessarily, like you said, you couldn't point on the field and go, oh, this guy's played for a Super Rugby Academy or this guy's played, but everyone had kind of was very talented, very switched on and the culture was through the roof. Everybody was playing for each other. So yeah, it was, yeah. it was pretty cool. But it was, you, obviously you said taking out the premiership that year, you guys had a great, great season mm -hmm. in the back end. What was it like winning the championship? I think it was like the first championship South had won since 2000, I think. Yeah, I think it was a, yeah, 15 years, I think it was since their last, their last one. It was unreal, mate. Like, uh, it's such a great club. And to be able to see all the old boys being so happy on the hill and being at the, in our clubhouse after seeing how packed it was and seeing how much joy it brought, you, you can't really beat that sort of feeling. Like, you love, like, in the end, we ended up winning our final quite convincingly, but like, it's still such a great feeling, just brings so, so much joy to the club. Yeah, it was. I think that was definitely something I remember after watching that game and going to the clubhouses. You would get old boys coming into the clubs if like your 
your Div three or Div four team won won like their final or something like that, they'd be they'd be at Chipsy Wood yeah. getting getting the piss. But like I think the Prem grade just brought South to a whole new level. That I don't remember like not seeing everyone I knew from South. I saw pretty much everyone that night afterwards. It was yeah. bloody loose. <laughs> Was I was one of those nights nice you just don't want to end, mate. Seeing everyone there, you're just like, oh, yeah. I wish we could just keep doing this. But. That's why. That's why you carry on a mad Monday. That's why. That's why it's yeah. good fun. <laughs> some of us, some of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously, after the championship, when you kind of got another another good look, and you were called out to play for the Brisbane City and the NRC, um, what was yeah. what was kind of that dynamic like? Were you were you kind of more comfortable after playing a season with Counties to kind of jump in to play the NRC? Yeah, um, that 2015 NRC was it's a bit of a mixed bag for me. Like it was, I enjoyed being in the in the program and being around these guys that um, obviously in the red red squad and set up. Um, unfortunately, I didn't really play too much. I think I might have played ten minutes the whole season off the bench. Um, but I was, like like you said, any any uh, representative owners at a high level, you get a good level of coaching. Like it's just good to be able to have a good three months for me. If I wasn't playing, I would turn up and just want to get the most out of those training sessions to make myself better. So it was a good two, two, three months of just getting good solid of training in and at a higher level against guys that are playing at that professional level. And you were playing with guys who, who was it like in your back line? It was uh, Quaid and you had a few other boys that were playing um, for the Reds in, in that back line, right? Yeah. So I'm trying to think back. Well, I think we had at the back line, we had Quaid in there. We had uh, Karevi was in there. Samu Karevi was oh, in there yeah. as well. Hmm. Um, I think Carmichael Hunt was in there at that point as well. So we had a oh, yeah, back yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah. I think I think that's the thing. You see, you put a kind of nail on the head. Any kind of opportunity, you, you take the wins and you kind of roll with the losses. Any any type of development you can get is is a win, in my opinion. That's what I yeah. always always tell people. Yeah, if they questions about that you kind of just go yeah development develop my game just come back next year and try better uh, yeah exactly you might not think it's gonna it's helping you in the short term but it, it definitely is you're putting your hand up you're showing what you can do and obviously in the long run it's going to benefit you majorly being having that sort of high level of coaching and training and just a different opinion of how the game should be played so you've got experience mm. all in all well, obviously, the patience kind of paid off and, and you got a good, made a good impression on Brumbies selectors and you were asked to kind of join the Brumbies training squad and go down and play some, play some club rugby. What was kind of your initial reaction when you got that, got that call to come and join the Brumbies down there? Yeah, it was, it was a little bit different. Um, so <laughs> I, what, the, the way the story goes is, uh, I, I was, again, I, 2016, um, I didn't get picked in NRC. But in Brisbane, I played a bit of club footy uh, for South again. Didn't get picked, and I I just finished my apprenticeship um, in in Brisbane, and I was you know I was just like you know what it's it's I think it's time for me to go look elsewhere to get get a contract. So uh, I pretty much so Dan McKellar, our head coach now, he was um, assistant coach down here at the Brumbies, and he I had a little bit to do with him at South, and I just flicked him a message pretty much and said, look mate, um, I'm not asking for anything. Um, I was, I'm looking to move to Canberra. Can you just let me know what what clubs what clubs are decent clubs to come play for? Um, just so I knew where I was, it was best for me to go. And had a phone call with him, and um, obviously sent my video around to to all the clubs, and they got back to me. And I chose the Mighty Club of Royals down here. Um, and then as soon as I pretty much committed to coming down, he sort of gave me another phone call saying, "Oh, we we need an outside back spot." For um for preseason, so do you want to come train, sort of thing? And I was like, yeah, I've jumped at the chance, and that's sort of <laughs> where it started. And yeah. I was pretty much just sort of training for free for that preseason block, um, and then just <laughs> Bernie, Stephen Larkin, sort of come back off as well these duties, and sort of liked like what I had and like what I've had to offer, and sort of kept me on week to week until I eventually got contracted, uh, probably six months later. So. Yeah, we're quite lucky. We're quite lucky Patience, you're a, you're, a pa- you're a patient man. You, you just no, keep, you just, you keep just grinding gotta, away. You just gotta jump at opportunities sometimes and make your own opportunities. I guess it's not yeah. not everything works out uh, as it should, but. 
I think that'll be for anybody listening that keeps having those doubts. I think that's a good good lesson to be learnt. So to just have have the yeah, patience, definitely. keep 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 grinding out. But um, you had your debut in a trial game against the Aussie Barbarians. Was was the yeah. highlight of the game scoring a try on debut, or was it just chucking on the jersey? Uh, it's, it's probably more just chucking on the jersey, man. Like obviously scoring tries is always nice, um, sort of icing on the cake. But um, just to be you know in the team and be around the guys, it, it's just good to be able to try and prove myself, mate. Like you're in a you're in a squad for. And you just want to prove, especially being a young guy coming in, having proved yourself, you just want to put your hand up and prove to, to your teammates that you, you should be there and you want to be by them sort of thing. So it's just mm. just the feeling of being finally not being accepted, but just I'm here now, like I'm yeah. going to put my foot down. So I think that was pretty, probably what I remember out of that game was just finally being able to say, look, I'm, I'm part of us now. Yeah, getting getting that pat on the back and kind of yeah, getting getting that yeah. real real golden tick. Yeah, no, that's pretty cool. And you've obviously played a, a few seasons with the Brumbies, and unfortunately this year the kind of season was cut short due to COVID. Uh, how did you stay fit during quarantine? Were you obviously you said the kind of the restrictions were kind of a little bit stretched out more than other places. Did were you able to go yeah. outside and do running, go to the gym, or? Yeah, so we. Um... So we're quite lucky. We have a pretty good program down here. Even in these these tougher times, they they work pretty hard for us to train. So we originally started off with groups of twos, um, and then we pretty much just took our gym equipment home. Um, mm. We're doing gyms and gym and running every day with skills and partners. And then obviously, as the restrictions lifted, we uh, got into groups of six, and then eventually groups of ten, and then twenties, and now we're a full squad. So. Uh, we haven't really stopped, to be honest. It's been it's quite good. It's sort of a time to get the little niggles in your body right. So the boys have come back into training these last two weeks looking in really good shape. And did you did you have like a specific partner when you had that two the whole time, or was it was it like you just switch off and off and on with different people? Uh, no, you, you generally stay with the same partners depending on what you want to do for the day and what sort of times you want to mm. you want to train. So some guys obviously like a bit of a sleep in, so they would. <laughs> going later on in the day and but like people like myself he's like to get up early and get things done and then have the rest of the day to sort of sort out so uh, yeah. i was lucky i was with uh joey power which is our, our halfback oh uh, yep yep um and okay. he, he's quite he's quite fit and motivated so it's good to uh try and keep up with him yeah that'll be a good good dynamic to have a nice nice guy keeping you going keeping you fit yeah and um, with the pandemic rel- relatively under control, we've obviously got a couple of different domestic versions, one in Australia and one in New Zealand. How is, yep. has, so obviously your training prep sounds like it hasn't really changed during that time, but you said like getting those niggles under, under control and that kind of stuff was that kind of extra time. Did you, did you have to kind of recover from any, any injuries or kind of make sure you kind of got some rehab in? Yeah, so I got put into a bit of a, a rehab program for the last two months, uh, just with just being a, an older bloke now. You got to look after the knees, so I've been <laughs> uh, sort of put into one of those programs, and um, it's been good. Like I said, it's probably the it's probably the best I've felt since I've been down here now. Just the body's in a good space. Um, coming into we're into preseason now, so it's just about getting through this and getting into some some work in the legs, and then hopefully we'll be playing in about three weeks. Yeah, you don't have to tell me that. That like, as soon as I put on the whistle and took off the boots, like my my gut came out in the first couple of years, <laughs> and I'm I regret it every day. <laughs> I'm just like, oh man, it sucks. Oh boy. But um, are you are you disappoint more disappointed to have the Sun Wolves out or excited to have the Force jump back in the comp? Uh I both. Like, I'm, I hate to see anyone coming out of a comp, get kicked out of a comp, mate. Like. Some was such a great team, like Japan based, yeah. full of great people, and they've put in like their win loss ratio is probably not the highest, but they've put in some great performance, and they're exciting to watch. Yeah. I remember watching them in 2019 last year, and they were one of the most exciting teams to watch in our in our comp. Um, and Japan as a as a country, they have the rugby's growing. Like yeah, it's the it's gonna, it's, it's, gonna, it's quite disappointing that they're they're going to be kicked out, to be yeah. honest. But like like you said, it's an opportunity for the force to come back in. Um, I mm. thought they were this tough decision for for them to be kicked out a couple of years ago. So I'm I'm happy to see they get the opportunity to come back in and play in the Super Rugby with domestic comp, which would be good. Yeah. 
Yeah, the culture in Japan is is crazy. It's like I think every every game, even if even if they lost by kind of like forty points, like you'd have the the whole stadium would be pretty much packed, and you'd have all these fans cheering for players. And it was yeah, you hundred percent right. It's the culture there. I think they should have, in my opinion, they should have kind of held out a little bit longer and given them a couple more years to kind of let them develop and then kind of just grow over time. But I guess Sanzar and Super Rugby have got to do what they've got to do. So, yeah, that's disappointing. Yeah, I understand. It's very disappointing, mate. Hmm. And obviously, it's, re- it's been reported that um, Super Rugby Australia, the competition, will be including some new trial laws. So um, there's a few of them which will include a 50-20 kick rule that I've, I've been told about forcing kind of the wingers to kind of drop more and encourage the ball to be swung wide more often, more open play. As, is your position usually a winger and fullback? What, what are your thoughts on that 50-20 law? Yeah, we started training uh, with that sort of mindset yesterday as a, uh, all sort of those laws got approved 24 hours ago. So, um, yeah, it's kind of make things pretty interesting. Like, we had a similar uh, law change in NRC last year, and that didn't change too much. We didn't really uh, look to, to play those 50-22s or 22-50s. Mm. But, I don't know, we've got... It's going to have to wait and see how it pans out. <laughs> but, in, in, until until you play a game against a couple of oppositions, you just don't you know, know. Yeah. What, what they're thinking or anything like that. Obviously, we'll have some sort of uh, game plan around it, but we'll see how it goes. It'll be interesting. One thing I was reading is that when World Rugby approved it, it was like, I think a week later, um, someone turned around and there was like, yeah, you realize they, they just took this from league, right? And they go, <laughs> what do you mean? And some of those World Rugby guys are so rugby union focused or don't really have a rugby league kind of background they had no idea that that rule existed no idea no, no i didn't hear that that's quite funny isn't it? That's no funny. oh man yeah but no i think i think it'll kind of make make the game a little more exciting depending on whether whether you guys will use it or whether other teams will use it well just like you said we'll have to wait and see we'll just be yeah. just be something that'll be kind of trial by trial by fire but it'll be good yeah that's it it's gonna be interesting well, that's for sure well, it's called the bonus point for a reason. We got a bonus point question for you today, and and I think yeah. uh, this this one here, I've been I've been kind of tinkering with this one, and I I wanted to pick see your opinion, and if you could pick anyone to play with, obviously you're a winger or fullback, and if you could pick like a back three, so two wingers and a fullback, who who would you pick to play with, like anyone in the world? Two wingers and a fullback. Yeah. Um, I'll probably have to. Start as fifteen. I'd probably pick Walks, Andy Walk, Andrew Walker. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, especially back in his prime, I've played a couple of games against him in sevens and stuff, and he's he's a freaking nature. And I only was only just watching his highlights last night. He used to score some unbelievable tries. Um, so I'd probably say him and his a fifteen. Um, the wing spots be tough one. Um. I know he's an All Black, but you'd probably have to say Jonah. He was a fucking, he was a special breed. I think, I think that'd so, be that'd be a pretty pretty smart choice. I think you and you and Jonah and that and that fullback. I think that'd be a good good nice combination. Power on one side what? and some elusive elusiveness on the other side. Yeah, yeah. It'd be, it'd be nice to have a big ball running. We obviously got Solomon Akata here at the Brumbies. He's probably similar devastation when he when he runs, but not probably nothing compared to. Jonah back in the day it was quite nice to watch, wasn't he? I was watching. Um, I think I was watching the the Amazon documentary of of oh the docu series of like his life, and then just all the highlights are pretty much just him bowling over <laughs> pricks. And I was sitting there going, "Yeah, it's un it's unparalleled." Well, you see videos of people coming up, coming against him pre-game, and they're still like, "Oh, I'm just going to get up high and early," and they're still just yeah. bowled over. <laughs> Not much, not much you can do. I think. Yeah, you, you try, try your best, but at the end of the day, that's why, that's why he was king. That's why he was the gut. <laughs> that's it. Well, mate, thank you, thank you so much for coming on the show today. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to have a chat to us, and we wish you all the best with this uh, domestic competition. And obviously, stay safe, and and hopefully, the Brumbies have a good crack this season. Is there anything else you wanted to share before we let you go? No, no, I appreciate having me on, mate. It's good to, to, to catch up. Like you said, it's been a while, so it's good to yeah. see you doing well over that side of the world, mate. No, I appreciate it, brother. But, um, yeah, we'll hopefully be on, this, on the same continent. At least we'll be able to grab a beer or something or catch up. But, yeah, it'll be good yeah, times. Yeah, definitely. Mm. definitely. All right, mate. Well, thank you very much for joining the Bonus Point podcast. Thanks, mate.